Racing from Xfinity Center, where the Maryland Terrapins take it over the Delaware Blue Hens, 73 to 67. Ended up being an exciting game, guys. This is Wayne Viner, Mason, Bruce. Bruce, what'd you see out there? I saw sticks. I saw a young freshman. 19 points, 13 rebounds, and when the going got tough at the end without Bruno being in there, uh -huh. it was Sticks who took us to victory, including three block shots at the end of the game. Thought he was fantastic. Guy fantastic. can play. The guy can play. It was disappointing play. how Delaware came back, but they're a good team, and we talked about it beforehand. We did. They're, they're not a pushover, and they had uh, uh, they got a big performance out of number five, Carter. He was... Uh, one of the better players out there. What did he get, 25? I think he had 23, but what's the difference? But he was great. He kept him in the game, and they just made their shots down the wire. Maryland got a little complacent with the big lead. Uh, they did have a big lead. They stretched it up to 22. Mason, what'd you see out there? Well, I saw kind of, and I really hate to say it, that classic Turgeon game where they get up big against a team that you can obviously see is not as athletic than them, is not as good talent-wise as them, and then they slowly let them back in the game to the point where they're pressed. Well, it was the first game. you got to realize that, and I'll tell you what else. They did. They, they had a 20-point lead and kind of fell asleep, and before you know it, they hit five threes, and it's a yeah, game. Yeah, there was a point where I would like to point out in the game where I believe both teams had air balls or shots right. that banged off the backboard, Boy. and you're... I was kind of sitting there and I was thinking maybe this is a sign that this game is either going to end up being like, I don't know, 67 to 50 or it's going to allow one of these teams to either surge big ahead because when things like that happen and just no one's making shots, it gives every team an opportunity to make a move and Delaware definitely did. Well, early on, Maryland, uh, the freshmen, they didn't see a shot they didn't like. They were shooting it from all over. At one point, we're only two of nine from three-point land. Uh, played a little better down the stretch. When you said they went cold, you're talking all 10 guys. They played 10 guys tonight. All of them well, sort of Cowan, went cold Cowan's at the same time. going to play better than that. He just he could not hit a shot. I don't, did he hit a three? I don't think he did. Well, uh, Maryland only hit two threes. Really? There were two for you, 18 or 19 say, from three. Talk about Ayala. I, thought he's, I think he's great. I think he's a great point guard. Uh, Ayala, Eric Ayala wears number five. He's actually from Delaware. He went to school at IMG in Florida, uh, he was a smooth point guard. The ball moves when it touches Ayala's hands when he needed to cut through the zone, and Maryland played fairly well against that zone down the stretch when they needed to. Ayala made some big plays. Wasn't the biggest on the score sheet, but that guy is a point guard's point guard. It's funny how they came out. They came out like they were, like somebody lit a fuse under them, and they were just firing up shots. Yep. Or else they would have seen 100 tonight. Because in the first five or six minutes, they could not hit the side of the barn. No, they but could. when Stick started to go inside and Bruno took over, Bruno was superb. But right. ticky tack fouls can't happen. Well, they, Bruno had some ticky tacks. Like said they played well, 10, 10 guys. We are going to go to break here on the Viner Four Gates post game show. We will be back at Xfinity Center in a few minutes with special guest Taj Holden at 73 67 Terps tonight. Mason, you got one thing to have before we go to break? Yeah, I do. And I think um, what you saw was Bender is not fully back yet. Correct. And Lindo, as we've been told by various people, and even is seen here in practice, is not a big man. No, but He's, he can fly. He can yeah, get he out can there. fly. He can All play, right. but. That, right. first that, went, that first basket, that first first basket went in and out. All right, you know how that worked out.
And as we all know, time is money. That's where our fully managed approach to IT can help. With proactive remote monitoring and management, we're able to keep tabs on your IT infrastructure 24-7, 365 days a year. And when a problem does arise, our technical experts can quickly resolve it, in many cases before you're even aware that there was a problem at all. For an affordable fee, we'll provide the monitoring, technical support, and full problem resolution you need to stay productive. Want to learn more? Drop us a line today to see exactly how we can help keep your systems running smoothly and keep you focused on what matters most, growing your business. Back at Xfinity Center, we're down here. It's Bruce and Wayne. Up there is Todd Holden. The champ is in the house. Yes, a champion, Terrapin. What are you doing with yourself these days? Uh, a little bit of everything. Just uh, coaching up in New Jersey, also working financial services, trying to be a halfway decent husband and father. So a little bit of everything. All right. David, that's all going well? It's going pretty well, depending upon who you ask. Okay. Well, we're asking you, so we'll take pretty well as an answer. Bruce? Taj, you know, give us your opinion. I thought Sticks for a first game was superb, and Bruno ruled the roost early on for sure. Yeah, they didn't really have many answers for those two guys down in the post early in the first half. Uh, Bruno obviously wound up in some foul trouble. Jalen, uh, fortunately and unfortunately, I got to play coach against him last year. And he kicked our butt pretty good last year, so I expected him to come out here and play really well. And, uh, you know, he just did the things that he was he was uh, capable of doing and nothing more. All right. You might need to talk a little more directly into the mic. With the oh, sorry about that. So that. That's okay. Uh, Bruno. So, Jalen, so, so let me ask you about Jalen real quick. Sure. A lot of times underneath early on, he was kind of getting pushed around without getting calls. Right. Is that a matter of because he's a freshman or it just looked like they weren't giving him anything? Yeah, you know, I think that's um, you, as officials, you kind of want to let guys play and figure it out themselves. And, you know, and this being his first game, he's kind of getting used to the physicality of the game. I know in one of my first games, first couple of games, that was the huge difference from high school to college is just how strong and physical guys are in the post, how, how quick thing the game actually is. And I think a lot of the freshmen this year or this game, uh, struggle with the quickness of the game throughout periods of the game, not the entire game, but they're, they're, they'll turn it around. They'll be okay going forward once they get used to it. Bruno Fernando dunked most of his shots. He started to, he looked like the guy we expected to see. They talk a lot about his growth between being a freshman and a sophomore. How does a person grow? You, you, you've been through this. Yeah, I think for him, uh, the game has slowed down a little bit. He has obviously had a little size advantage down in the post, so his teammates were looking for him. He was hot early, so he did a lot of the things that the team needs him to do to be successful. So he got going early. I think if he would have stayed out of foul trouble, this game would have been a 20, 25 point game. But you know, when you had a lot of a lot of freshmen on the court, sometimes things like this happen. Would you say that the you know the mid majors like a Delaware, like Towson, like UMBC, they've gotten better since you played? Oh, yeah. I mean, you look at this guy Carter. I mean, Carter could play for anybody. You mean like Loyola, Chicago? Yeah, like Loyola. I'm, mid <laughs> I'm yeah. saying well, mid majors. I mean, you've yeah. had George Mason in the past. You've had, uh, you know, uh, numerous teams that are mid majors that have come in and performed well. UMBC, maybe? UMBC. I said UMBC, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. is, but, you know, a lot of these guys are high level high school players as well. They just think you're recruited at the highest level. Right, so uh, Nathaniel Horton, I've played against for the last two years out of New Jersey, and he played on two high-level teams last year. He won a tournament of champions. So him coming here in Maryland at a big game against us, um, it's not a big game for him. It's just another game. So he was prepared to play. He came out and played well. Probably the same thing for Carter. I'm not familiar yeah. with him so well. but Carter looked like he had a lot of skills out there. He was doing it all. Yeah, he's very skilled, and once you get a skilled guy confident like that, I mean, you know, he had a couple bank shots, looked a little bit like Tim Duncan out there. Yeah. Couldn't really speed him up. You get a hand in his face, he still is making shots. So you can't let a guy like that get comfortable, especially in the, from a mid-major, because once they get it going, you see in the almost 30 tonight. So. Almost. Uh, what would you make of the point guard play with the freshman Ayala getting a lot of touches down the stretch? Yeah, I think Eric's going to be good for the team. Um, you know, he's experienced. He's a guy who's had five years in high school played on the major circuit, played on some really good teams, teams has won championships. So he's going to come in here and provide what Coach Surgeon needs. 
you can move Anthony off the ball a little bit and put him in a in a two guard situation like they used to do with Melo when Anthony came here. Yep. So I think he'll be very beneficial for Anthony. And as a team goes forward, the year goes forward, he's going to be a really good player for us. Does the word savvy describe Eric Ayello? Yeah, I mean he's one of those guys you're never going to speed him up, right? He's never. He got a little un uncomfortable here because the game is a little bit fast, uh, a little bit faster than I think he's accustomed to. And he found himself in some spots where he drove the lane, and normally he'd get all the way to the rim in high school, but here he's not getting to the lane and didn't quite know what to do. But I think once he figures that out, figures out the game, he'll sit down and watch tape and assess himself, and he'll, he'll be better next game. Okay, if somebody's looking to follow your high school team, where should they be looking? Uh, we're at the Randy School in Tenton Falls, New Jersey. Got a couple of guys that are pretty good. One's going to Florida. Actually, two guys going to Florida, one guy going to Villanova. Uh, we'll be at the Hoop Hall in Massachusetts. We'll be down at the John Wall Classic in North wow. Carolina. All right. And are you on Twitter, Facebook? I'm on Twitter, Coach Tosh Holden. All right. That's T-A-H-J. Yeah. Just like it always was. It Number changed. 45 for the Maryland Terrapins here. Thank you guys Tosh for Holden. Me. I appreciate it. Thanks for, Thanks for coming on. on, and uh, wish the best of luck this Thank season. Thank you so much. All right.